Please welcome Mary L. Tabor. The one thing I'm sure of in this journey that Del just described um, is that creativity operates in all endeavors, but in the arts, it operates against all odds. The novel Who by Fire begins with, here's, here's, here's what this book looks like, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, it begins um, with a very short chapter that's half a page, and I'm going to read you that half a page, The Fire. I would have told Lena about the fire I saw in Iowa, but it is regret that writes this, that longs for said things unsaid. The fire would have amazed her. The heat was so incredibly hot, it reminded me of something I learned in physics. The fact that the air around a lightning bolt is hotter than the surface of the sun. It was a barn burning, not with any political or racial overtones, but a necessary burn of an old wooden grain bin in the center of town in Whiting, Iowa, where I grew up. She was a Baltimore-grown city girl wouldn't be able to imagine the story of the burning, though I suppose it's a common enough event in rural parts of our country. But I know something Dina doesn't know or couldn't imagine amazes me. I go home to Iowa rarely, and as it turns out, after Lena died, fortuitously, the controlled fire. I tell stories about myself all through this novel. Memory recalled over and over again of my father, my mother, my sister, and all the men I loved, some of you are right here in this room, get called up for me somewhere, somehow, whenever I write. What do any of us know for sure? The people I love the most are those who are uncertain, still searching for who they are or might become. Maybe Melville had the answer about memory and knowing. In Moby Dick, what does that unforgettable whale stand for? I am still trying to figure that out. His narrator, Ishmael, says, it is not down in any map, true places, never are.